Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today is an interesting little video and kind of cool. I had a company called Neo Hippo in China reach out to me and asked if I would review their DC-10 uh, DAC. And it's a $80 DAC. It'll be on Amazon. There'll be a link in, down below. Uh, and I would appreciate it if you did buy it from that link because I am the first reviewer to get this product that actually is going to do a deep dive and we're going to go on that journey together. So um, anyway, so the Neo Hippo DC-10, great little piece. It is marvelous for 80 bucks, but what's really cool about it is it's got socketed op amps. You can roll the op amps in this. And why don't we do that a little bit? First of all, let's talk about it. It's an, eight, it's an ESS 9028Q2M DAC chip. It's a very nice DAC chip. Nice power uh, optical USB or uh, spit of coax input on the back. Very typical coax in optical USB powered. And that's kind of interesting. It's a lot of fun that way. And uh, RCA output. Now the USB also is power, but also you can plug that into a computer and it'll take the USB power from that computer's USB, but also the digital signal into the unit. So it does have USB in, or again, optical or coaxial. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna talk about rolling op amps on this. And I'm also gonna reset and do some close up stuff, but real quick, I'm just gonna take it apart and it's super easy to do and it's really cool. And they'll be in the video, there'll be some close up pictures of the chips and things like that because there's some important information on those that you need to see. So I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up and then we're going to, I'm going to show you the circuit board real quick. And then we're going to, I'm going to reconfigure and get some tighter shots so you can actually see things better. So as I take the screws out, the front panel comes off first. And as it comes off, these are the two uh, legs that the screws go into. And then we push the circuit board out through the back and there's the case. Now the, I got to say, this is a single piece of extruded aluminum. It is really well finished. It's very high quality for the money. Unbelievable that you get this kind of quality in an $80 DAC. So there's the board and there are the op amps. So give me one second to set up new lights and zoom in on this stuff and we'll talk about op amp swapping. So here we are. Again, this thing is quite amazing in that for $80 DAC, you get socketed op amps. Now, it comes from the factory with the TI-NE 5532 op amp. And it's a good op amp, no question about it. Uh, it sounded real good. Now, what I did was I got the unit. I listened to it for maybe half an hour. And then I just let it cook for 24 hours and I came back to it and listened to it more in depth. And I did put this in the big system. So it was the best equipment I had to listen to. And it sounded good with the TINE 5532s, no question about it. But then, and I got the bug when I got this unit a couple months ago, I went online and found some new old stock Burr Brown OPA 2604 uh, op amps. And again, I got these five op amps from uh, China, I think for 12 or 13 bucks delivered. So very inexpensive to do this op amp swapping. Those are the stock ones. And then, because I can't stop, I also got, and I'll show you those in just a second, the, again, new old stock Burr Brown OPA 2136s. And they all had a different sound character. And then I got TI OPA 1656s. These are really amazing. So let's talk about that. Like I said, the NE 5532 sounded really good out of the box. The OPA 2604s, the old Burr Brown ones, they sounded okay. They didn't sound as good as the factory TI chips. They had a different character. It was much more veiled, kind of like looking through a dirty pane of glass. Uh, you could see detail, but you couldn't resolve all of the finer detail or all the nuance. But, so, but it was worth experimenting. Um, and that was kind of fun. Now, when we got into the Burr Brown, the OPA 2136s, things got a lot better. They were significantly better than the, the stock 5532s. They sounded, bass was better, more defined, mid-range was good, higher frequencies were clearer and a little better, had a little better drive to the music. Uh, no question about it. But when I went to the OPA 1656s, oh my goodness, did the whole world change. These things made this little deck sound phenomenal. I mean, it upped its game. With this chipset, and these I got online from on eBay. I don't think I paid 20 bucks for, maybe 20 bucks for all three of them shipped. Um, and that upped the game on this little deck 
to the point where I would stack with these chips in it, with these op amps in it, I would stack this DAC up against DACs costing 200, maybe more than $200. It sounds that good with that. And the fact that you can roll the op amps, I think is just phenomenal, especially on an $80 DAC. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you some different things on the chips themselves. So we're going to cut away for just a second, and I'm going to insert some close-up photos of the chips because there's some important information you need to know about their installation. So give me one second to do that. Okay, so there are the three different chips, uh, the Burr Brown, the TI, and the old, and the old Burr Brown, the uh, 2604s. Now, what you'll see, and I'll insert a photo, is in the corner of each one of these, or there is a dot or a notch. This dot represents pin number one. This notch corresponds with a notch in the socket here. So that way you have to install them in the right configuration and you blow it up. So the notch there corresponds with the notch there, notch there, and then this one is pin one, and that's what that little dot, and again, I'll show you a close up of it. That's where that uh, dot indicates pin one, pin one, pin one. Now, on these TI chips, there is no notch. There is no indication. Although if you look very closely, and again, I'll show a close up, this says number one. So that's pin number one right here. So it's really important that you line up pin number one with the notch and pin number one in the socket. And again, I'll put some close up photos in there of it. But once you get that done, it's super easy to just put the chip in. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. And there you go. Now, if the chip's a little bit reluctant to come out, I just use some curved needle nose pliers to grab them and pull them out of the socket. And that works really well. So hopefully you got some fun out of that. I'm going to go ahead and reconfigure and give you a summation on this thing. And again, those are the different chips and it's, it's cool. And there's a million different chips out there. You can roll op amps to your heart's content. Now, question I'm going to get, Sparkos op amps. The Sparkos op amps, the 3602s will not fit in here. The 2590s will not, 2509s will not fit in here. The tall, the big, the Burson Vivids will not fit in here, but the V5s will. So you have some choices there. And again, it's a, a space configuration, but again, the OPA 1656 is fine. Any one of the traditional looking uh, op amp chips is fine. The Burson V5s are fine. No Sparkos, uh, no Burson Vivid. So let's reconfigure and we'll come back. Well, anyway, Folks, that's the Neo Hippo DC10. It's a compelling little product. It's really well built, very nicely finished, got good features on it. Uh, as I said, it's an ESS Sabre deck. It'll do 32768 and DSD 512, and it did all of those without any problem, although there's nothing in 32768, but I did feed it an oversampling signal from Artivana, and that was what was kind of fun. With the TI OPA 1656 op amps in it, I put it in the big system, I fed it a signal from Artivana, and I put on one of my favorite kind of meditative uh, artist. His name is Al Gromer Khan. I'll put a link to his playlist or his channel for title and Spotify in the description. And it's, he plays sitar um, and he is very heavily influenced Indian music, Asian music. It's kind of new age. It's meditative. It was really calming. Uh, and the day I was uh, listening, I needed that. So I put this in the system. I sat back and listened to Al Gromer Khan. And honest to God, it was like a couple hours later, I realized I had just lost myself in the music. This thing didn't get in the way. I wasn't listening and analyzing. I had my audio file hat off and I had my music hat, music lover hat on. And it, and it just, I was engaged and I just didn't think about anything. And I couldn't give a piece of equipment higher praise than it just got out of the way and let me enjoy the music. And I thought that was really fun. So it's a cool piece. Again, it's available on Amazon. There is an affiliate link in the description. I would very much appreciate it if you bought it from my affiliate link. That would help out a lot. And again, the op amps are very inexpensive. eBay, just look them up. I'll put the op amps, the, the, the model numbers of the op amps that I used in it in the description. So if you want to go search them out, you can. So compelling product. I mean, it's just an amazing little sign. Now, you know what would be perfect with it? A Wii Mini. This in a Wii Mini, and you're looking at 160 bucks into a nice little Fozzy or IEMA or uh, SMSL Class D amp. Oh my goodness, that would be a wonderful sound. Um, this is a great, don't use the deck in this. This is a great companion to that. And you know what else I would do? I would also consider teaming up 
the Neo Hippo with the Ween Pro. I do think it's a better deck that's what's in the Ween Pro. And here again, you're at about 220 or 230 bucks for the combination into a nice little, you know, amp. You'd be, it'd be wonderful. A little, book, a little nice pair of bookshelf speakers. What a great sounding system. But it did, it sounded good in my big system with my reference gear. And I liked that a lot. I had obviously $80 deck. What kind of expectations you had? It exceeded all of my expectations and I truly believe it punches above its weight. I hope you liked the video. I hope you got something from it. I know my friend in Mason City, Iowa is going to enjoy this video. Um, please give me a like. Please give me a subscription. Uh, if all of you guys subscribed, I could grow the channel quickly. And the more subscribers I have, the better able I am to solicit manufacturers for demo gear. And in case, in, and often they can reach out to me. And these folks actually reached out to me with this product. Um, and so again, please give me a subscription. Comment. Tell me what you think. Ask me questions about rolling op amps, whatever. Anybody who's commented knows I read the comments. I look at all the comments. I, talk, I respond to the comments. That's an important part, I think, of this communication we can have. And kind of this, I'm hoping we can kind of build a bit of a community. And it's really humbling to think that it's kind of happening. And that makes me immensely proud. So like, subscribe, comment. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to. In the description will be links to this link and the model numbers for all the op amps and everything else. Um, and uh, obviously there are Amazon affiliate links in the description. You know what happens with those. My playlists are at the bottom. I have been asking people to send playlists. I'm still asking you to send playlists. A bunch of people did. The community post is fleshed out now with probably a dozen or so playlists. Some of them, are, all of them are really interesting and very cool. So I encourage you to go listen to that because the ability to share music and enjoy music with each other, all of us together, I think is the most important part of this channel. It's nice to know about the gear, but I think the ability to share and discover music, that far outweighs anything for sure. Well, I'm Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, and I'm saying now it's time for you to go listen to some music, maybe on your little Neo Hippo DC-10 hooked up to your Weem Pro. Thanks so very much for your time. Have a great day.